The IUP Crimson Hawks entered the 2009-2010 season with high expectations and even greater potential. A much different projection than the team had four years ago when Joe Lombardi was hired as the Crimson Hawks head coach. It's uh, This year was a culmination of a, a four-year journey, I think. Uh, we had a vision, my, my staff and I, when, when we got here, on what we wanted to accomplish. We could see things developing, and as we went along, we added we added uh, la layers to it, what I think our, our program was about. And uh, the culture was established the first two years. The talent was established probably the last two years. More than two years removed from playing college basketball, the six foot nine, two hundred thirty five pound senior forward Akita McLean brought a buzz both on and off the court as he prepared for his first season playing with the Crimson Hawks. Coming in with Akita, it was, it was great. You know, he came in with the hype of uh, transferring from Boston College and, you know, he hadn't been on the floor for two years, so it was a lot of anxious people, me being one of them. It finds Akita McClain! Akita! Thomas Young! Akita McClain! Welcome to the promised land! That just happened! I think just as important was uh, Kevin Stewart and uh, Scooter Rankin and, and Willie uh, Estrella because uh, they, they gave us the depth that we needed and, and, and they also gave us the attitude and, and the understanding of what roles they could play and it's important that the guys are capable of playing roles but they also understand what their roles are so that they can be the best that they can be in the, when the team needs them the most. Look at Scooter Rankin, a nice pump fake and Scooter's going to drive him in. Nice ish. From this team. Rankin for three. Huge move. The scooter, razor sharp. I was trying to trying to kind of kind of latch onto a good team and and uh, be a part of something big. And uh, it, August fifteenth was the day I came, and August fifteenth was the day I said I was coming. So it was the right decision. So I'm, it's it was it all worked out, and uh, I'm glad I did it. I met Coach Lombardi on like uh, he came and visited my uh, my college, and he wanted me to come up for a visit. Good steal by Kevin Stewart. He'll have a breakaway with the left hand. Number three out of Philadelphia. And, uh, when I came up, I just I just loved the uh, the family environment, and uh, I knew that I could fit I could fit in and we could do something. With the addition of McLean and a balanced core already established, IUP opened up the season as the PSAC West favorites, and the Sporting News nationally ranked the Crimson Hawks sixth in the land. Before regular season play would get underway on November 16th, it would be preceded by a preseason tour that would assist the team both on and off the court. The ACC uh, tour in the exhibition season to play those three teams in, in a short period of time, uh, we got very fortunate with uh, being able to schedule them in the first place. Uh, my relationships with the, the three head coaches at those schools uh, enabled us to do that. And, uh, and, then, and then to pull them together in the time frame like it was was, uh, was was really a neat thing. These games against the ACC were very helpful in the long run because it gave them the exposure against, uh, obviously, Division I opponents. It was a good experience, though. We had, it was a nice little rock star bus. You know, we made it down there. Tough games against Maryland and Wake. Tried to get the feel back for it. You know, those were my first two games back in about two, three years for playing. You know, we came out in the first game against Maryland. Um, we, you know, it was our first game together, so it wasn't, it wasn't as good as the last game that we played down there against uh, Georgia Tech. But, you know, the first game, you know, we came out, a lot of people was anxious, you know, first time on the floor, you know, then it's being ACC. We went down there, and, and, and I, I had a lot of confidence in our team from day one that we, were, we would show that we could be competitive. Uh, I really didn't know what that meant in a way was if competitive was a, uh, uh, staying within 15, staying with 20. Well, I mean, the tour was uh, was a great experience. Anytime you take a trip like that, it's going to be it's going to build the the cohesiveness of the team and the and the the unity and the bond that goes on there. And and to go on a tour like that and actually play well and compete helps all the more, you know. And I thought we established ourselves and we really looked like we belonged on the court. They they give a lot of different presses to you, and, and our guys were handled them well and, and played with confidence and. We weren't, we weren't good enough to take them late into the game, but we were good enough to compete for the 40 minutes. IUP would return to its winning form that head coach Joe Lombardi had embedded in his experienced squad in the regular season. The Crimson Hawks jumped out to a quick 11-0 start as they quickly approached conference play, 
junior Daryl Webb would capture two PSAC West Player of the Week honors during the winning streak with dominating play inside the paint. Coming into the season, we had a lot of confidence coming after uh, the ACC trip. You know, we came off our overtime loss, and you know, a lot of guys just was like, you know, you know, we could do something special this year. We started building a, a rotation, and we started building the guys' roles in, in that month. And, and I still thought we had a long way to go from being the, reaching the potential and being the type of team on both ends of the court. But the first 11 games, uh, they played some good games. Uh, they played some not so good games, but still won. And I think all the while, Coach Joe Lombardi was stressing, listen guys, if we're going to go a long way and, and be a championship team, we've got to play better defense. You know, the first 11 games were rolling, everybody was clicking, and uh, you know, everybody felt good. You know, I think that was a problem going into the Cheney game. Uh, you know, the, the day before, we found out that uh, we were number four in the country at the point, at that point, and uh, we found out that three of the top four teams, well, two of the top four teams lost. So we were like, you know, we have potentially to be number one. Just when you can regroup and you can refocus, and we don't have it all figured out. And every day in basketball with the PSAC and any conference that you're in, you always have a chance to lose a game if you don't play the right way. And I thought we just got a little bit comfortable with where we were at at that point. After losing the Cheney in double overtime, it's always hard your first loss of the season. And uh, I think the guys are a uh, little bit disappointed, but uh, you know what, it, it really taught us a good lesson and, it, and, it, and it, we really, I thought, refocused after that to sit down and let's, let's play defense, let's, let's do this on both ends of the court and some nights we're not going to win on offense, uh, which was kind of what we had been doing up to that point. Cheney's always a tough place to go and play anywhere on the road, really in our conference, it, it's tough to go in and get a win, so um, having Cheney and uh, Clarion be the only blemishes there were uh, you know, it's pretty impressive. But to go into Cheney and, and lose the way we did, I mean, we left it all out there. It was a couple overtimes and our guys were, were spent. And, you know, it was just one of those nights. They hit a lot of shots. They played really well. And, and Cheney was a pretty good club, too. Uh, not bad. You know, they, uh, they caused some problems on their own during the season. Uh, but I think that was helpful in the long run, the fact that, all right, here's one segment. We've won 11 in a row, took it on the chin. Time to start a new streak. Ashton Smith with the run out. Smith with the left hand. Stewart has Young and Webb with him. Finds Delaware. Yeah, yeah. Chris Edwards and he's going to go for the dunk. Yeah. Nice pass inside to Akita. Behind senior leader Thomas Young's 26 point performance, the Crimson Hawks would down the Golden Eagles of Clarion 76 to 60, a win that would spark six more victories to open up PSAC West Conference play. Included in the seven game winning streak, were a few notable performances. The 7 0 run was impressive for IUP because it's something they really needed to add on to the fact that they were playing fundamental ball. It's something they returned to their game. They only had two turnovers against Cal in that stretch, and uh, they won against their opponents by an average of 16 points in each of those games. You know, we came and we bought it every game. Every game we bought it, you know, we were hyped. We we're like, let's go. You know, we didn't want to lose a game in the PSAC. Ashton Smith, good inside look to Thomas Young. <laughs> Two points there for Young. I thought going into conference play, we, we really we really got the want to. And I talk about with the players that you have, the most important thing on defense is you have to have the want to to play defense. And, and they start having that. And then as, the, as January and February moved along, we start developing our skill set and our rotations and our and our communication level. And that even made us a better team for the rest, defensive team for the rest of the season. We kind of take our pride in defense, but limiting our turnovers will also help winning the game. So the, if we keep our turnovers down, it definitely has an opportunity for them not to score. So Because we turn the ball over, they got a chance to score. But if we got the ball, it's kind of hard for them to score. So Webb gets Edwards back That's and gets a steal. Back. Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> wow, this place is going nuts. I've never seen anything like that. Cal didn't have that many turnovers, if I recall, something like five or six. Uh, so you had a situation there where um, you protected the ball and, and you know won that type of game. Turnovers are not going to help you win, and if you call only two turnovers, nine times in ten you're going to win. That's when I really knew that we had the guard play and we had the solid passing that, that was going to allow us to be a championship contending team because anytime you can go into a game you can have two turnovers, which is unheard of. I never heard of anything like that in all my years of playing. Just to have two turnovers showed that we valued the ball and we valued every possession. Two turnovers in one basketball game is 
pretty much perfect. And when you play a perfect game as they did against Kyle, this is this is when I first realized this team is good. And not just good, but great. The big three of Webb, McLean, and Young would put on a show for the home crowd seven days later in an 81 to 55 trouncing of the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Daryl Webb put together a highlight reel in the game in which two of his spectacular dunks were featured on ESPN SportsCenter's Top 10. As the Spider-Man, oh, Daryl Webb punts up the water spot. And number eight, Margaret eight dude, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Courtney, turn it up. <laughs> As the Spider-Man, oh, Daryl Webb punts up the water spout. At number five, you down with IUP? Yeah, you know me. Kevin Stewart off the backboard to Daryl Webb. IUP, 81-55 over Edinburgh. Seven. Probably my most memorable part of the entire year was Webb's dunk over uh, the guy down low in the Edinburgh game. It was earth-shaking, earth-shattering. The whole you know, place jumped up. I wanted to jump out of my seat, and then obviously the play made uh, Sports Center. And, and he also had the number five play in which Kevin Stewart contributed to, um, giving him a pass off the backboard in that same win against Edinburgh. Kay Stewart off the backboard to Daryl Webb. You got highlights all over ESPN. And, and you could just see the team coming together right before your eyes, uh, the, the continuity, and, and just and the team, it, it, in every sense of the word, was a team. And that was the game when they were having fun and everything was clicking. Getting on ESPN was pretty unique and I congratulate Darrell Webb on that. And, uh, but I think it's a, it's a good thing for the program because if you get other people around the country seeing that, you're, hey, your team's on you know, ESPN, a Division II team, and you're getting recruited by that team, then um, that's going to have something to say about it. Kicks it to join Sanders. Sanders open for the triple. It's making it rain on him, Mike. A little alley oop action into Thomas Young. To speed. Nice play there, Webb. Back to Keita McLean. Dunk you very much. Randy Granson. Smith. Feeling it. Big shot by Smith. Sanders. No good. Game over. Sorry, it wins it. Five for first. 71 62. And Sorry, it wins it. A seven game winning streak that began with a conference victory over Clarion would come to its conclusion when the Crimson Hawks went on the road to face the Golden Eagles for the second time in the season. Sophomore guard Aston Smith led the way with 18 points, but it was not enough as Clarion pulled away with a 71-62 victory, dropping the Crimson Hawks to a 7-1 mark in PSAC West play. It's such a long season, playing 30 games. There's room for error. I mean, it's, it's, you're allowed to lose an occasional game. Uh, on the road at Clarion to your to your you know to your rival, maybe not the way you want to lose one. We were challenged a number of times, but that was one thing about this team. Any time that uh, that we were really put in tough spots or whatever, we almost always responded. You know, guys came up and made plays uh, in crucial points of the games, and different guys at different points too throughout the year. And so, uh, and Clarion was a good team, and, and they were just overshadowed by how good IUP was. Uh, but they were they were a good team. They could shoot the three and. Uh, IUP after that loss uh, really uh, stepped down and took a look at their team and came back and played absolutely phenomenal the rest of the way. As Young out front, as also has Sanders who steps into another three. And we have numbers here. Akita! Akita to jet play McLean taking off for the one-handed dunk. Beat this IUP team as he lobbed for Thomas Young by Kevin Stewart. What a pass. The Crimson Hawks would spring back from their second defeat of the season to again find themselves on the winning track. A season's worth of time, hard work, and energy would pay off on February 20th. On their home court, IUP would secure their first PSAC West regular season title in 15 years after a 62-49 victory over the Gannon Golden Knights. Kevin Stewart will raise his left fist, raise the banner, IUP. The PSAT West title. Senior Thomas Young would dominate the second half, leading his team with 22 points. That game against uh, the three times that we played again, and it was a battle. All three of them were battles. Uh, you know, being able to be at home and clinch the division against Gannon, that was really major for us. That that really set the tone as far as going into the playoffs. We wanted to make sure that, you know, we were 
the team to beat. For us to come out and match their intensity and match their toughness, it really spoke a lot about our team. It was a big step for us winning that uh, PSAC West Championship, um, especially against Gannon. Um, they beat us twice last year, and it was really, I really personally wanted some revenge against them, so it was cool that we got to clinch the division at home against them. Clinching against Gannon meant even more because it was almost payback from last season when Gannon swept them, and I think it meant a lot to them to kind of not get revenge. I, it wasn't the exact same Gannon team. Gannon was young this season, but it, deep down, I think it did mean a lot to them to kind of get some redemption and get the uh, clinch against them. It was very exciting for us in, in February to, to clinch a, a conference championship, regular season championship uh, with three or four games to go. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a very competitive game against Gannon. They're a very physical team and, and, and just a tough matchup for us and, and very similar to the type of, type of team that we are. But uh, to their credit, they were focused all the time and, and they found the energy and the effort to uh, play every game like it was the most important game on the schedule. Just to go through a team like Gannon, who has been the cream of the crop and the team that actually represented the, the region last year, we knew that that was going to be a big part of what we needed to do and how we need to be successful this season. I and mean, I have a little bit of senior fever. Are you catching Absolutely. it all, Seth? Absolutely. How about the senior? Thomas, forever young, 16.2 points per game on the season, 5.2 rebounds. Transfer from UMBC 2007-2008 season. How about number 24 and transfer from Boston College, Penn Hills own Akita Big Game McLean. Akita, what can I say, 14.9 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game on the season. The guy has been so efficient these last five games down the stretch. He's a big-time player, and he does what big-time players need to do. In the team's regular season finale, IUP hosted Slippery Rock in a game honoring the team's two seniors, Thomas Young and Akita McLean. Young and McLean would score a combined 50 points in route to a 99-71 victory over the Rock. An appropriate way for the two seniors to close the regular season in front of friends and family, but there was still one goal in mind. It was a big night. My mom usually doesn't come to a lot of the games. My dad comes to all of them, though, but it's good to have her out there to see me play and then for me to also have a good game. You know, I got Coach Lombardi ran a couple plays for me, got me going early, so it was a good night. It was fun. Uh, Seeing so, yeah, night, it was good. Uh, we really didn't think, we knew, well, we knew it wasn't our last home game, so we, we really didn't. We just looked at it like another game, but, you know, they had the whole Seeing night celebration and Akita played good, great. You know, I believe he had 26 that game, and I had 24, and, you know, the two seniors combined for 50. It's storybook ending to a great season. Senior night with Thomas Young and Nikita McLean, terrific, because they both went out with a bang uh, in their final home game against Slippery Rock. And that's what great players do. Really good players, great players. When the moment is really big and it's on them and it's time for them to shine, they can push themselves to excel and perform at those moments. And... Both of them were able to do that on a night that was supposed to be about them. You want your seniors to come out and shine, and, uh, and it really was fitting for them to have the games that they did. I mean, those guys are, are going to be truly be uh, sorely missed, and uh, you know, the, we certainly don't have the season that we did without them, and, uh, and so it was great for them to come out and on their night just, just uh, you know, have, have games, games to remember. I don't know if the script could have been written any better. Thomas and Nikita both went for 25 points or more, and uh, the, the, our two seniors, and it was an emotional night, and we played extremely well, and, uh, and, and it was just able to become a, a very enjoyable game, and, and, and not only for our guys, but for the fans and, and the crowd, the, the nice crowd that we had that showed up and to, to uh, honor these guys. And it was just a wonderful all-around night and, and just kind of the beginning of uh, what was to come in the next month. In a rematch against division foe Gannon, IUP cruised to a 62-53 victory with four IUP players in double figures. Kevin Stewart looking to run. You got a two-on-three situation, a strong drive, putting it up, and the foul. Kevin Stewart, the junior guard, doing it all. The team's win, however, did not come without a sacrifice as Akita McLean continued to play with a fractured wrist. Not having Akita, that was really a big blow to us, but we knew that you know we have so much depth on our team that uh, somebody was gonna step up 
Well, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I think I was going for a rebound. One of the guys, I don't know, my my hand kind of got caught up, and I think I jammed it. I don't know how I did it, but I ended up breaking my trapezo or fracturing my trapezoid bone in my hand. So, kind of set me back a little bit. In the PSAC semifinals, IUP found themselves playing their first game against host team East Stroudsburg in what would be an electrifying start to the weekend. Well, you know, we were the top seed going into that part of the playoffs. And, you know, even though you're the top seed, you're playing at the home of East Stroudsburg, which, is, which was the top seed over there that was still remaining. So, you know, it was a home game for them. So it was basically like, like they were the top seed and we were like the underdog. So that's how we played it. We played it going into the game as underdogs. These were when the games were starting a little bit more tough. You know, if you lose, you go home. And even in that environment, that hostile environment, they all stepped up and they came through to advance to the finals. Yeah, the atmosphere there was was insane. I mean, they, they their fans were out in force and uh, and everywhere. It seemed like they were on the court some of the time. That was that was one of the, the craziest atm atmospheres all year. I think when uh, I forget who it was, but either it was Ashton taking the ball out at the end of the game, and they were like literally like uh, Cameron Indoor, just like hanging over his back. They were tough. They were pretty good. They're a very good team. They play well together. They got a lot of weapons, and the way they play up tempo when they press was was pretty tough. But we managed to pull it up. Uh, East Stroud also uh, was held down by IUP. Some of their key players, and again, it boiled down to defense. So when the game is in the 60s, IUP is probably going to be in good shape and win a game. That's exactly what they did. 67-63 the final, and they move on to the championship, beating the Warriors on their court. Following the victory over the Warriors, the Crimson Hawks were one step closer to their first PSAC title since 2004. With the absence of Akita McLean, Scoring production had to be found elsewhere. Um, that was that was a big weekend for my confidence. I'm not gonna lie. I was uh, I was kind of struggling coming in. Just uh, you know, I just wanted to be a bigger part and help out more. You know, and I and I, I knew with Akita being out that I was gonna have the chance to do that and kind of step up and and obviously not not score, but just be you know a facilitator and, and you know be smart out there. And that's what that's what coach needed me to do. Gets it over Sanders in the corner for another triple. He doesn't miss too many. <laughs> Junior center Willie Estrella surprised the Golden Bears, scoring a career-high 22 points with 10 rebounds, adding to senior Thomas Young's 25 points. One of our themes all year long was we just have to overcome. We had a lot of guys sick and hurt early on in the year in November, December, and uh, sometimes we had seven guys at practice out of a team with 13. And uh, we, we really focus on not worrying about who wasn't there, not worrying about what the problems were, but let's overcome it, let's find a way to win. You know, I just came out, I tried to do what I had to do. I, um, you know, I did a few rare things that, that didn't go on a lot. I hit multiple threes in that game, and uh, that was the game that Willie played tremendous, where he had 22 and 11, and, uh, you know, the best game that he had so far. So, you know, it definitely came at a great time, being as though Akita was out. Willie definitely played hard that game. He came and rebounded. He was ready to play. He was focused, paying attention to everything, details. He was ready. He stepped up when he needed to. I mean, without Willie, we probably wouldn't have won that game. Our guys just had a great resolve and a, and a great togetherness that uh, they believed in one another and believed that uh, no, no matter what the uh, obstacles were, we were going to find a way to overcome them, get around them, go through them, whatever it, whatever it took to uh, win the prize. IUP is going to walk away with the championship. Get ready to celebrate. The Hawks are flying tonight, as is the ball. We are PSAC champions. Winning a conference championship, it, it's something big around here for the whole school, for the, for the basketball program, and head coach Joe Lombardi. And IEP was the better squad. Another all-around team game with multiple players in double digits. And that pretty much sums up the, the entire season, the way that the, these games went. And uh, it, it, was, it was a great accomplishment by IEP to win their, to win their conference tournament. It felt, it felt good. It felt good. Uh, we, we took... We took the uh, PSAP West, and then we wanted to take the PSAP tourney, and we, we really wanted to do that so we can try to get home court for the uh, NCAA tournament.
March 13th, regional playoffs. The one-seeded Crimson Hawks hosting upset-minded eighth-seeded Fairmont State. And welcome into Memorial Fieldhouse. Kevin Stewart looking to break the press. Takes it all the way with right hand for two. T.Y., good hustle down low. Takes it in. How about that strike? Watch the patience that IEP has on offense. The reason why they are number two in the country. Smith inside of Sanders. Nice pass. Good ball movement. Sanders doing a strella. One. Bruner inside. Henderson. Dominant. Off the glass. The Fighting Falcons played an efficient first half, looking to take the lead into the locker room. Unfortunately for them, Aston Smith had other ideas. At worst, you're going to be up three. It's been a very successful first half. Don't force up a shot. Henderson, triple team. Good steal by Aston Smith. No one's one. It's Slow the ball up. Smith to the cup. Takes a layup. 30-29. That's going to allow Fairmont State to get one last opportunity for a bucket right here. Let's see what they can do. Five seconds on the clock. Tally, spin move, right hand. No good. Smith will throw it up from mid-court. Has a chance. Oh! Thrown it. And it looked good. It looked good from this angle. Fairmont State will not go into halftime with a lead. You want to talk about a momentum shift? Let's talk about a momentum shift. 32 to 30. Ashton Smith. He put up a shot. And I just grabbed it off the board, and I wasn't going to shoot it. And then Kev was like, shoot it, shoot it. So I just heaved it, and I was walking out. I didn't even know it was going to go, and I see it splash. You know, Ashton's a tremendous player. You know, he always brings the energy to our team. So, you know, he got the steal and the layup, which was, uh, you know, that, that kind of shift the momentum a little bit. And then once he hit the, the three-quarter court shot, that just that basically sealed the deal as far as the momentum go. We had the crowd behind us. It was funny, for real. You know, that's a lucky shot. It's nothing, you know what I mean? He practices every day. It was good for Ash. Fairmont State would not falter down the stretch, holding a two-point advantage with less than two minutes remaining until three-point specialist Julian Sanders hit the biggest shot of his young career. We are about to hit a minute in this game, a minute 20 and counting right now. Senior leader Thomas Young. Sanders rises up for three, and he hits it, and he hits it. A huge triple. Enter Sandman. L-U-T-C-H clutch. Unbelievable answer right there. IUP with a one point lead. I can't even hear myself think right now. 66, 65, Young, Sanders. Kev always comes to me, you know what I mean, at the end of the games and tells me, we need you, you know what I mean, make some shots, you know what I mean, you gotta, you gotta make some. And that's what I come in to do. Julian's hit big shots for us all year long. He, uh, he, he, and he did in that game, that second half, he, he came out and, and really, uh, you know, he, he's not afraid to take the big shot and, uh, and he's made some huge shots for us along the way and he does further, further into the tournament, but. Uh, I think on the one seed, there's a lot of pressure uh, playing the eight seed on a given night, especially when the eight seed's as good as a Fairmont State was uh, with, with 20 wins going into that. So it was very, uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was challenging, and uh, I don't know if we kind of played in a great comfort zone the whole time. But as it was the case all year long, came down very close game in the last two minutes, and, and our guys made, made the big plays, whether they were on the defensive end or the offensive end, they, make the, they made the big plays to uh, pull the game out against Fairmont. West Virginia State strutted into Memorial Fieldhouse with a lot of excitement for their high-powered offense. IUP, known for their stingy defense, would showcase an all-around team performance against the Yellow Jackets. Contrasting styles for both teams, it'll be interesting to see. himself up. Throw it down, big man. Over dribble at midcourt. Going to Thomas Young inside. One more pass. Back to McLean. Yep. Thank you very much. Sandman. Three. Ball. Inside. T.Y. And a finish. Right hand. Give another time to Scooter Rankin. His fifth assist of this game. The Crimson Hawks shot a blistering 55% from the field on their way to a 91 to 76 victory earning their spot in the regional finals. 
So we came into the game, you know, making sure we managed it, how many threes they made. And, you know, we, we knew that if we held them to a certain amount of threes that we were going to have a great chance to win the game. So. And, and yet again, you just want to look at balance. Darrell Webb dominant down low, and, and he had to be. He had to be dominant with Akita down low because th this is a team that shoots from the perimeter primarily in West Virginia State. So IUP knew they could dominate inside, and they did dominate inside. In front of a capacity crowd in Memorial Fieldhouse, the Crimson Hawks welcomed the 29-2 West Liberty Hilltoppers for the right to go to the Elite Eight in Springfield, Massachusetts. IUP forced their will against the Hilltoppers who were ranked 10th in the nation behind a dominating performance from Daryl Webb who tied his career high with 27 points and added 12 rebounds. Well basically that game was about us more than about them. We had to stop what they do. Right? They like to shoot threes, they're big men, the five men like to step out, shoot deep threes. We had to limit all those touches. I think we gave up more layups than we did all year against them. but. That wasn't their strength. Their strength was the three ball, so we stopped that and, and helped us win the game. With a lot of support in the championship game, aided by three other Crimson Hawks reaching double figures in an 84 to 72 victory. Just hang, hang on to the ball. Four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions of the Atlantic region rush the floor, cut down the net. Book your travel plans, Crimson Crazies. Make room, Springfield! IUP, undeniably elite. Um, you know, it was just good. And to, for the crowd, I think the crowd played a major part into it. The crowd was basically like the sixth man that game because, uh, you know, they had the whiteout going on. And, you know, it was a final home game. You know, win or lose, it was a final home game. And if we won, we get to cut the, the nets down at home, which was, uh, which was a great feeling. And It was that type of excitement and, and thrill for our guys and for me as a coach personally. Uh, to have that type of support and that anticipation for a game and then, uh, and then to go out and perform. And our guys to, to, to play very well on both ends of the court and to, you know, hold a team 30 points under its average was, uh, was, was a sense of uh, pride in our defense, but also a sense of a uh, uh, where our team had come in the, in the last three months and how we had grown to, the, to be a championship ball club. You have to play flawless in, in these tournament situations, you know. One loss and you're done. But that game was, you know, being there in person, it, it was a moment I'll never forget. The season seemingly coming full circle as IUP would again go on a long road trip to face rigid competition. 450 miles away from home, Coach Lombardi and his team began their quest for a Division II National Championship. To lead eight, it, 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 it was it was quite the uh, event that they have up here. They did a wonderful job of hosting uh, hosting the teams and, and and exposing us to the Bas College Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, it was just it was just big time from from one uh, from the starting to the end. The 
atmosphere was great. You know, it's the Basketball Hall of Fame, so, uh, you know, their whole town was just about basketball. And, uh, you know, it was just a different type of atmosphere than you would have at home. It was just, it would let you know that, you know, you basically made it to the next level, or the final level of, uh, you know, the Division II NCAAs. IUP began the week in a matchup against the Valdosta State Blazers. The game's most anticipated matchup was between Akita McLean and the Blazers' All-American Tyrone Cornell. Yeah, I was up. I was ready for him. Uh, me and Crunch studied him until the 1 in the morning that night. I was ready to play him, ready for a big game. But they still got a good team. Even though he didn't play, they still had a good team. They had other players who kind of tried to pick up his slack. So, I mean, it was tough. I was ready to play him, but, you know. At that moment, you kind of like, you take a deep breath and you're like, all right, they're not the same team we were just preparing for because we were preparing to play against these teams. Akita saw film on their big guy and he was ready to go up against him. So now the game takes, kind of takes the wind out of your sail. Like, all right, now we should win this game. We should be all right. But that wasn't the case. This team came out hot. A late dismissal of Cornell and another teammate changed IUP's game plan and may have altered their play as the Blazers caught the Hawks napping. Going into the half down 12, Coach Lombardi had the difficult task of regaining control of the game. All year long, we, we had been somewhat inconsistent as uh, starters, but had been great at finishing. And uh, we kind of knew the makeup of our team, and for whatever reason that is, I don't know if you can ever uh, figure that out, why you get off to slow starts. We have a chance to do something special. So, you know, everybody just came out in the second half with a different mentality and... We knew we were a second half team, so we went in the, uh, the locker room. Coach didn't really have to say anything to us. We kind of, like, coached ourselves. Coach Lombardi tells us all the time we're a second half team. We basically explained we needed to turn it up on defense and just step it up. We're giving up too much, too many easy shots, layups, and we turned it up on defense, got stops, and that's going to make the offense come. It was territory that we really hadn't seen much all year long. I mean, we've had some bad halves, but that was, uh, that was crazy. They just, they were controlling the game. The second half looked like a different game, as Daryl Webb picked up his team, scoring 14 of his 17 points in the second half, leading the Crimson Hawks on a 21-0 run to start the half, with additional help from Julian Sanders and Kevin Stewart. Everybody seemed like the second half, they, you know what I mean? They, they stepped it back up and we got the job done. We came back. I think we, they were up like 15 or something like that. The second half, we just came out focused and everybody started clicking and we started playing well and started playing how we play. Daryl just came alive in that second half and he just looked to go to work and really dominate inside. And it was really a good game just to propel us to know we went to the uh, to go to the Final Four. We knew that it was we were going to get another day to live, so that was pretty exciting. Following the strong finish. The Hawks would win the game and were on their way to play in the Final Four, one step closer to a national championship. We were fairly confident that we still had a, uh, we, were, uh, we were very confident that we were still in the ball game in the, in the, at halftime, but we needed to come out and play our style of basketball. And uh, one of the things that, that we pride ourselves in is rebounding. Uh, and, I, and that was the, uh, the number one stat that made the biggest difference in uh, today's game. In a game with everything at stake and a chance to go to the national championship, IUP clashed with St. Cloud State. Two physical teams battled it out all 40 minutes as balance would again be the key factor for the Crimson Hawks. Nice look inside the web. Well, that was a fine pass by Thomas Young, wasn't it? There's an alley-oop looking for a oh, beautiful move by Thomas Young. Stewart looks outside for Ashton Smith, and he buries it. Side to him to get him involved. He'll do it himself this time. Count it. And the foul. Rinkin trying to work his way free into the lane. Beautiful move by Scooter Rinkin. It just made a lot of great plays down the stretch. Uh, uh, in the last four minutes of the game, we just, we just made one play after another on the offensive end and, and kept them at bay. And, and pulled out a, a very exciting uh, and thrilling, thrilling game to advance to the championship game on uh, on Saturday. National semifinals, Division Two, running our lead eight. Peter McLean gets free for the slam. Wonderful. Towards the end, Julian hit a great shot uh, with like a minute or under a minute left that put us up two. Let's see what happens. 
Well, that's a tough shot. He drained it. That's what he's in the game to do. So it comes down to who's going to make the plays at what point in the game. About three and a half minutes left in the game, and I can picture this. I can still see it uh, like it's uh, happening now. Uh, right in front of the IUP bench, Julian Sanders pulls up and hits a long, I mean a long three ball, one of those that I like to call splash, you know. He hits that baby right in front of Coach Lombardi. Now, Coach Lombardi is very composed most of the time. He doesn't uh, rant and rave and that sort of thing. But in back of Julian, and he was a, just a step out of bounds in back of Julian, Coach gives it one of those, you know. And it was one of those plays where you think this may be the shot, this may be the one that elevates the team to the national championship game. You know, I was open, you know, the, the play, you know what I mean, was designed for me, so I figured I can get the shot open and <clears throat> I just, it just felt good, you know what I mean. Um, Five players in double figures, led by Young's 15, springboarded IUP to a 76-70 victory. And when the clock hit zero, Coach Lombardi had officially led IUP to its first national championship appearance. Uh, these guys have been doing this all year. It never ceased to amaze me. Uh, they, they're just gutty. They're gutty. Uh, we, we got a, a really good game from a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, our, our mantra has been just fine when we got up here was just find a way to win. The buzz on IUP's campus grew after each game and following the final four, the Crimson Hawks faithful made their way to Springfield to see their team play in the school's first national championship. <laughs> That was pretty cool. We saw the fans there in the morning. We came back from our shoot around and they were chanting IUP. That was pretty cool. That gave me some goosebumps. Um, and then when we came down to get on the bus, I wasn't expecting the, the line of the, the, the cheerleaders and the fans. And I turned the corner, it was like a shock to me. So It was a feeling that you have to be there to witness. Like you can't reenact the feeling or anything. So, you know, just to have the supporters that we had, uh, you know, it was a great feeling. Coach Lombardi prepared his team for a battle as they approached their matchup against last year's national champion runner-up. Uh, we, we had kind of kept our, our, our focus, I want to say, for uh, the entire year and, and didn't make one game bigger than another. But uh, when, we, when that game came up, it was, a little, it was pretty challenging as a coach to try to separate that and, and, and uh, try to sell to the players that this is just another game because uh, in actuality, and everybody knew that it wasn't. We knew that we can really do this. We can really win a national championship. And we're, we're in the position now that we wanted to be all year. Cal Poly Pomona, a team that saw its hopes crushed by an overtime buzzer beater, came into the game with a chip on their shoulder and gained an early lead which they would maintain throughout. What an atmosphere, just absolutely fabulous. Uh, the fans who had watched on the TV, the semifinal game, listened to our broadcast on the internet, whatever the case may be, uh, and back in the Indiana community that made the trip out for the championship were just absolutely fantastic. In, in looking back uh, over the success of our team, it's a, it's a very humbling experience and uh, it's, a, it's a humbling from the standpoint that uh, when, you're, when you're somewhat at rock bottom, uh, you, you're, you're looking, for, looking for ways to climb the mountain, you're looking, for lot people, you're looking for ways to, to help get to head above water and to move forward. And uh, this, I, I felt all along uh, a tremendous, tremendous sense of gratitude uh, for, the, for the people that helped us along the way, the people that, that gave of themselves and supported. We have a tremendous community here in, in Indiana County and 
their, their support and their, their, um, the, the fact that they cared and, and wanted us to succeed was motivation to us and, and allowed us to provide scholarships for the individuals that uh, eventually made a difference in our, in our championship run. It's just, it's just a great feeling to be loved by a lot of people and it's, it's genuine love. It's not just, oh, you know, they win but you know, we don't really like them. I felt like people in the community really liked it. So, you know, overall I just felt like it was a great year and uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it to go back to Division One or, you know, anything of that sort. I was definitely happy with my decision to come here. Um, hopefully, I mean, we had a good season, great season, but I want to say my better days are in front of me. I still think I have a lot more to come. I think the uh, better half of my career is still ahead of me, still to come. So, uh, and then and then the, the uh, we worked hard over the last three, four years to, to build up a, uh, a fan base, and uh, we did everything from, uh, from hoop troop for the young kids to socials before the game for the older people to uh, starting a uh, terms and crazy group and, and encouraging the cheerleaders and. Uh, bringing out the fraternities to games and always looking for ways to market and promote and to, to, to make the atmosphere better and, and to see it not only to see us successful but to see the atmosphere become what it was was also very was very rewarding uh, and, 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 a, and a great there was a great sense of accomplishment uh, along those lines too. Uh, the, uh, the the end product uh, the end product was uh, not only wins it's not only on paper. Uh, but the end product was a, was a spirit and attitude that is, uh, that's valuable to any community and valuable to any institution and that I hope uh, is just the uh, starting point for, uh, for further uh, success.